Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 324 for October 3rd, 2019. I am one of your hosts, Trevor the Fry. Uh, I'm Adriel the wow. uh, Frosty. Somebody's in a hurry, Frosty. Slow I'm like, your roll. I'm ready. Freeze it. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stand by. Stand by. <laughs> I heard the beep. It was in my head. You did. You yeah. did. But you, you, you flinched. Uh, no, you creeped. You were creeping. You uh, anticipated the beep. Yeah. What's it so, called when you fall forward a couple of times, or when your hand uh, goes to the gun? <laughs> creep, creeping. <laughs> creeping. Call it okay. creeping. Yeah. yeah. And if you can stop, I am a the creeper. Yeah. You are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't just mean on social media, lady accounts. <laughs> Speaking of ladies, the lovely Kelly is uh, running late, so she hopefully will join us um, in a little while. And Dave is suffering from audio issues um, and is right off the call now. So anyway. For now, you're stuck with Frosty and for Latte. We're sorry. Um, let's jump into what we did this week in guns, which is brought to us by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. So this week, they have their schedule out of upcoming classes. Um, the dates for these classes are October 5th and 6th. So that's right around the corner, as in this weekend. They have Dynamic Pistol 2. In order to take Dynamic Pistol 2, um, you have to have Dynamic Pistol 1. And then there is Dynamic Carbine 1 and Dynamic Pistol 1. So the 5th and 6th, Dynamic Pistol 2. So if you got the 1, sign up for the 2. November 2nd and 3rd is Dynamic Carbine 1, no prerequisite. December 7th and 8th is Dynamic Pistol 1. So um, if you would like to sign up for these or get more information, you can go to www.theshootingcenter.com forward slash training forward slash overview or stop by the store in person or call 1-403-451-1777. You could also send an email to info at theshootingcenter.com to get all kinds of information about their upcoming classes. Adriel? Yes. What? What have you been up to in guns? Not a lot. Uh, I did that ladies' day. Man, we got I'm way more tired. way more people than I thought it w- that we would. It's so like I this... remember from the last show, I was saying like, yeah, it's going to be like zero. I think we're going to get like thirty people out of the sixty. And no, we got like sixty. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, always seems to be the case with ladies' days. The uh, man, the women are hungry for their firearms. They want to get after it. It, time and time again, it's expected to be low numbers, and it's almost double. Yeah, it's. Uh, I thought for sure that the cold would keep them away, but nope, they just bundled up, just trucked yeah. through. Yep. Yeah. It was good. It was uh, yeah. a really good event. So, like the the guys from the club really um, did some did some fantastic organization. Uh, we had uh, some really great prizes, great food at lunch. Like it all ran really, really smoothly. Uh, we had, uh, like a little bit of bunching up in some of the different stations, just people had to, had to line up for, for a little while. But, uh, other than that, Ooh, ran really well. Got, nice. uh, we, uh, we got them on a shotgun station shooting some like three gun props, uh, like a Texas star and some clay poppers that fall down. And then a clay flipper flips a clay up into the air, uh, with 12 and 20 gauge. You had stuff like that for them to do. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Uh, we had rimfire rifle, uh, standing, sitting, kneeling, whatever they're comfortable with, really, with like 1022s and 795s and, and whatnot. Uh, we had a pistol bay. We had uh, action rifle with ARs or M1 Garands, or I think we even had an SKS out there, too. Uh, and then we had precision rifle with uh, uh, like a precision rifle uh, in 6.5 Creedmoor, and they were shooting that out to five and 800 meters, I believe. So... If they uh, if they got bored with five hundred, they could shoot it out to eight. And you guys a couple of them did it. Day. You guys do a ladies' day like I've never seen. 
<laughs> it was I, I don't want to say it but i think it was like a little bit better than our our, our open house like we have a, a range open house once a year and we, we do a similar thing we had like fewer stations this time but they were really nice and the lunch was really good and like all the organization was just like a step up from uh from our open day so uh it was it was really nice and, and hearing hearing them hit the 800 was really interesting because you could hear like the sh- the sh- the hit and the shot at, at such a different uh, interval, it's, uh, it was really interesting, and it was so far away, you could and you could still hear the ringing of the steel. So yeah, it was all good. It was lots, of, uh, lots of lots of. What was out. the um, what was the age? Did, you know, did you like what was the youngest lady? What was the oldest lady? What kind of oh, spread did you have here? Had anywhere from like eight to I don't know old. I didn't I didn't, I didn't ask their eight ages. I hear that, I hear that that's, uh, that's apparently a, that's, that's a, a thing. Number. You're right. You're not supposed to. <laughs> and now they've got a gun in their hand, right? So mm. you don't want to ask a lady yeah. how old they are. Yeah. By the way, on. I'm just curious. I, I think you're the oldest lady here. How old are you? Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> wow. I don't know how that would go. <laughs> Probably not well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, funny. so that was uh, that was interesting and uh, yeah, really encouraging. Oh, and the nice the nice part too, we were done by like three, so I was like, oh, I got to go home and eat at home. Weird, this this never happens on range day. That uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got so um, uh, I reached out to this company and I'm like, hey, uh, I need a first aid kit. Can you like send me one for free and I'll review it on my website or something like that? And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So <laughs> <laughs> so I got one. Uh, I had like a scratch and dent before, but like I took that, uh, I took that stop the bleed course with you and, and Kelly and, uh, and the other guys from Ragnarok there. And, uh, and I looked through this thing and I'm like, what could I use if someone was, uh, bleeding to death? And, uh, n- nothing really, nothing, nothing is of any value in this thing. I don't think I would, uh. I'm not saving any lives with this thing. I would save really? someone's day if they were like, if they had like a bee bite or uh, oh, they had man. a little boo boo or something like that. Scratch, scratch and dent. It's that not test. what Gavin taught us to put together. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, so I asked these guys for like a basic kit, not their, they, they have a fancier one. Uh, this comes with a tourniquet, uh, nicer package. Like a tourniquet, uh, some gloves, some other, I don't know gauze and whatnot and uh this is a this is a better kit like keep in mind our, our three gun we've got trauma kits with all of our uh all of our admin bags anyways this is more of a i need one kind of a thing because i want to have one available on hand kind of a thing so yeah it's uh it's convenient so i don't know i think uh there was a couple of interesting things in here one of them have you ever heard of splinter outs no, you're you're on mute there, Trevor. I can't hear you. Yeah, aren't they kind of like a tweezer type configuration? Yeah, thing? I'm gonna open up one, open one up on uh, on video here. And sorry for, for everyone because the my my video is is mirror image here, and you can't see what the heck I'm doing. But uh, uh, there's like a little metal guy in there. It's like a super sharp point on this thing, oh. and you basically because it's so super sharp, you can pick away at the skin around a sliver. And uh, open it up, and then get that sliver and pull it out because it's such a sharp little pick, and it's in like a little sterile package. I guess these are cheap, like five, ten bucks, kind of a thing. You get like ten of them. Wow! And you just like chuck them in an outdoorsman's kit or something like that. There's a couple things in here. Where it's like, oh, I gotta Google this before, before, <laughs> before I do my review because uh, I don't know what the hell this is for. <laughs> like, I noticed. What is this? I know. I, I had to Google it. I now know. Is that for a sucking chest wound? Is that no. what you tape on the side? No? no, it's a it's a smooth fabric, very nice and smooth. Wow. I did not know what this. Is. I'm like, what the hell is this? It's moleskin. If you get a blister, so if you get a blister in your boot, you stick this inside your boot where the blister was, and it's nice and soft, and it'll make it nice for your blister, or you won't get blistered. Truly a scratch and dent kit. Mm. No, no, no. This thing also has like more hardcore stuff. Okay. Uh, wait, wait. wait. Uh, yeah, tourniquet. There's the sucking chest wound guys there. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like it came with two of them. And at first, I was like, "Why? Why do you need two of them?" Mm, the bullets all kinds go. Of reasons. The bullets yeah. go through. Yeah. Through, yeah. through and through. Yeah, you get the front and the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I you guess you know. would need two of those. <laughs> well, I mean, one is none. What if you mess one up? 
Yeah, or what if you get like multiple puncture wounds or something like that? Multiple this is piece. this is the one where it's like, oh my god, like yeah, someone gets hit in the chest, it's like they're they got minutes, right? And then it's all over. So uh, this is the one where I, I was I was really looking forward to uh, to having one uh, on me because I don't want to I don't want to go out that way. And it's got like a right. bunch of other stuff in here. Anyways, uh, cool kit. Do you have like a trauma kit? What I have is other Trevor is a professional paramedic. That's what he does for a career. And I um, asked him to build a trauma bag for the pistol section Mm -hmm. um, to take to matches with us. So that resides in my truck. Ah, okay. So you've got you've got your own med kit and paramedic. Right. (laughs) We've got uh, we've got some paramedics that go to our uh, our three gun matches, which is very handy. Uh, But. the idea with something like this is, uh, you know, maybe you're out in the middle of nowhere and you got to do it yourself kind of a thing. So, Yeah, exactly. Very good. Um, and that's kind of it. You know, I've got a, a three-gun match coming up that I'm, uh, I'm preparing for. Um, season's starting to wind down. It's cold out. We're going we're gonna to keep going until December if we can. Uh, and that's, that's about it for me. What about you, Trevor? Um. Oh, busy uh, week again. Um, me and the Losers Club, we went to a two-gun shoot for... Um, it was a two-gun wounded warrior fundraiser shoot at the Hampton Club. Uh, it was put on by Christian Sony down there, who was a vet, and he did a fantastic job. It was um, pistol rifle, not unlike the um, everything but a air match we were at the week before. But this time, because, again, it was open to non-Black Badgers, it was a fundraiser. So the whole idea was to get as much participation as possible. So it was open up to everybody. I got to stop myself right here and tell you I saw the coolest thing, Adriel. Uh I saw a 17 HMR knocking down Ipsic poppers at 75 meters. I wouldn't think that a 17 had the power to do that. Um, you would not be alone in thinking that. Um, I don't think anyone would ever s- expect a 17 HMR to knock over a piece of steel at 17 yards. I know because what's, what's the energy? What's the energy on a on a 17 HMR? It's not that much. No, of course not. But it is pretty, you know, nasty. But geez, it was actually knocking over poppers. Blew my mind. Anyway, back to the match. Um, there 250 was... foot pounds of energy. That's really? with a 17 or 20 grainer, 245 otherwise. What's a yeah. 9 mil half for dude, power? Dude was, sh- dude was shooting a 17 uh, or a Savage 400. A17, just like mine. Yep. Had the 25 round mag on it, and uh, he was having a blast. Oh, you know what? The energy difference is not as extreme as I thought it would be. Regular 9 millimeters, 260 foot pounds. So 250 versus 360, tomato, tomato. Huh. Yeah. I like yeah. So. yeah, and like Jeremy said, they were set very, very light, uh, and they were forward falling, uh, which is always better. But uh, regardless, man, to to have them knocked over like that, yeah, Jeremy actually, who was on the chat right now, was uh, in my squad. Um, we had an awesome squad. It was a fun day. Unlike the EBR match, there was no movement in this match. You always shot everything from behind a table. Mm-hmm. Um, pistol and rifle or PCC and rifle. So I did PCC and rifle. I brought down my STI AR, um, this one right here. So I brought this down for my godson to, to play with because this time um, Ben was with us and Ben needed uh, a rifle. So I brought him my WK and I, of course, used my SLR, which we'll see here in a minute when I talk about what I did to it this week. I did made some changes to it. Um, so I finished second out of, uh, the entire field behind George McKillop. George McKillop is, uh, I, I, he is, um, I don't know if I want to, I got a joke that I tell about George, but it's so dark that I don't know if it's appropriate, hmm. but we told some pretty dark jokes on here. Anyway, George is, um, a soldier who has uh, he had a very full and accomplished career, and he's been an action shooter probably well over 20 years, and he's one of the best shooters that we have. Um, I don't think I've ever beaten him in any match, anywhere, at any time, with any kind of gun. 
so this was, of course, no no different. He um, our times were very similar. He was a little bit faster, but I had four mics. He had two mics. Hmm. Then there was another dude who was like 15 seconds. So last time our matches were like 500 and some seconds, right? Hey, Julie, remember that? This time our times were in the 250, 260 range. 250, 260 is reasonable. How many people did you have out there? Well, that's the thing. We had 40 people. Hmm. Um, we didn't leave the range till 7 p.m. Hmm. And there was still a squad shooting. And there was only seven stages. How was the uh, seven stages? How many bays? Seven bays? Um, no, we had one bay with two stages for sure. And then one bay with three stages. Mm, that's what slowed you down. Mm. If you, were, could you shoot all three concurrently or no? Uh, yes, we did have the okay. option to shoot those yeah. three hot. Yep, yeah. we did. None of us chose to, but, but we did. So, um, no, I mean, like, were the bays oriented in such a way that multiple shooters oh, yeah. could be shooting yes. at one time or no? Well, one sh- in in most of the bays, there was only one stage. So it was one shooter at a time. The stage that had three bays, or mm-hmm. sorry, the bay that had three stages, you could not shoot multiple shooters because they were all shot from the same box. It's ah, like face yeah. this way, shoot these targets. That's the stage. Face this way, shoot these targets. That's the stage. Shift yourself to the right, shoot these targets. That's the stage. Mm-hmm. So, um, but uh, a lot of fun. Different animal than EB uh, AR, but still a lot of fun. And um, forty people, thirty bucks a person. 100% of the proceeds went to Wounded Warriors. The winner, yeah, the winner was given a tax receipt. The donation was made in the winner's name, so they got a tax receipt. That was your prize. Whoa. That right? is super interesting. I like yeah. that. Oh, I like me, that so much. Me too. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, pretty brilliant. Thanks for donating. Here's your receipt. Go yep. claim it on taxes. Oh, yep. You win the money and the charity gets the money. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. Yep. It is just a fabulous idea. Um, and then, so it was a f- another busy weekend, right? We, um, did I pick Gallon up somewhere along the way this time? I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Yeah, I drove to, yeah, I picked Gallon up in Salisbury. He got dropped off at Salisbury. I picked him up. We drove to, yeah, that's what we did. I left. I left stupid early in the morning. I left at 5 a.m. I got up at 5 a.m. I left at 5.30 for Hampton. I picked Gallon up along the way. We drove into Hampton, shot that match. We didn't get out of there until 7 o'clock in the evening. Drove to the Miramichi, got a hotel room. Gallon and I split a king suite. God help me. Uh, I booked the room on Expedia. Not I did it on my phone. And I booked a king suite as opposed to two doubles. But it was like Expedia, last minute take it or leave it no refund get it for 80 bucks so i get there and uh, i go to i'm i'm hungry i'm hangry i'm all the hangry i'm tired all right we didn't leave hampton until seven so you go to the front desk first thing they ask you do you have a reservation what's your last name so i walk up to the front desk and i just looked at the guy and said for a lot do you have a reservation yes what's your last name oh god gallon hold me back <laughs> For a lot. All right, I've got you in a king suite. I'm like, all right. I'm like, hold a second. No, no, I booked a room with two beds. No, you booked a room, you booked a king suite. I'm like, uh, second. So I check my phone. Yep, you're right. I did book a room with king bed. Do you have a room with two beds? Your room has a king, sir. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell you know, me. Your anymore. room has a king, and uh, your companion is very fetching. Uh, well, right now, that this is the point where Gallon looks at him and goes, "Dude, we are not a couple." <laughs> Don't tell me one more time that the room has a king. Tell me this: Do you have a room with two beds? Your room has a king. All right, that's it. <laughs> Give me the keys, Gallon. Uh, so anyway, we walk in. There's a sofa bed there, so Gallon took the sofa bed, and then I locked myself in the bedroom for the night with the king bed. So it was, uh, it was all right. And the reason why we did that is because the next morning, we had no, not the next morning. The next shoot wasn't until one o'clock in the afternoon, and it was an outlaw rimfire precision. So I got to do something that I haven't done in six months. I slept in. 
I didn't even turn mm. on an alarm clock. I slept until like 9 a.m. I couldn't believe it. The day was half over. It was amazing. Fancy. Anyway, so as Gallon likes to say, we went for their medals and their women, and we took almost all the medals. So the rest of the boys from the rest that have been shooting uh, ORPS with us, they rolled down. So Denis and Joey, our match directors from rest of came down, and they brought Alex C., and we're going to break this guy's thumbs. Dude, he's a machine. So. My first match, I shot like a 190, right? I got a new optic. I went out. Then I shot a 340. And that was like the high score around we could find for this part of the country anyway for that particular match for the month of September. 340, Mm -hmm. big number. We get down there, and it's blowing like hell. Plus, um, I'm trying to take in how they're doing things. Some of it's different than the way we do things, and you know how I like change. But I'm just like, roll with it, see how it works, and take what – Take the best and leave the rest kind of thing. If, if you can steal a good idea for your own shoots at home, do it. They did um, so. They did one thing very, very different. We assign a range officer per squad yep. who, who reads the stage description and runs the shooter. Um, they had one range officer at the back of the range running everybody simultaneously. Oh. Well, it, was, it was up to each other to clear each other's guns. Mm-hmm. No one read the stage descriptions. There was reshoots because of that. Um, that. That I mean, that's on. Like I caused a reshoot by not reading something correctly. There was another reshoot with the squad next to us because the stage was set up not exactly like the drawing, and they were shooting it in the wrong order or the wrong time or something. Mm. So the irony is, we reshot. And we both got the exact same score. Gallon had to reshoot too, and he actually went down ten points. So that's that's really too bad. Um, they paint after every shooter, which which we're going to start doing. It makes it a lot easier. Oh, that slows things down so much. Not so much. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. You got to stop after every shooter and go down to a hundred meters and paint targets. Yep, we did it after every shooter. Ugh, that you could do that if you don't have very many people. Well, we, we had the entire line full going simultaneously. Yeah. So it's not like you know. So I mean. That worked. Um, what else? I got, uh, oh, yeah. So, Alex C. Alex C is in, um, is in production. So, I had shot that 340 last time. And we get down there, and it's super windy. I'm like, this sucks. No one's going to lay down any good numbers today. Like, it's stupid, stupid windy. So not only did I like not shoot a 340, I don't even know if I broke 300. Alex shot a 370. Like when I shot my 340, it was pretty much perfect conditions. He gets down there and shoots a 370 in the wind. Like he just What's perfect just, score. Um, every stage is is 100 points. So 500. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Um, I think every stage is 100 points. Because you shoot 10 rounds. And it's 10 points per, per hit, so I'm math and note at 500, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, just just gross, man, that he could shoot a 370 to begin with and shoot a 370 in that wind just blows my mind. Um, and his optic isn't fit to use. Like, if you look through it, you think you got glaucoma. <laughs> so what, what good on him. It? I don't even know. Some I think it was a Bushnell. Joey, Joey was telling me about it. It's pretty bad. So 100 meters, anyway. right? It's all technique. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's obviously not a trigger puncher. So, um, And then this week after that, I ordered a, an IBI barrel for my modern sporter build. I finally decided to go with a 7.62x40 WT. I was going to make it. Yeah, I'm doing it. What a day. Finally, I'm finally doing it. So uh, I'll have a 223 non-restricted gun. Uh, uh, Trevor, we I, I lost you for about uh, 20 seconds there. Oh, yeah? How about now? Yep, good now. All right. I was just saying that uh, the computer wants to do some updates or whatever. I was just saying that the um, ballistics on the 762 by 40 wt is similar to the 6.8 SPC. So some people may be familiar with those ballistics. Also, to if the listeners don't know what the 762 by 40 wt is, I often use the analogy of, you know, how you got a 38 Special and a 357 Magnum. Right, same, same, same bullet, same, same round of ammunition. Only the 357 Magnum is just longer and has more case capacity. So, if you take a 300 blackout and you compare it to a 7.62 by 40 WT, same idea. It's basically the same round of ammunition, only longer with more case capacity. Same uh, kind of bullets. 
typically, unless you're trying to go subsonic and suppress it, you're shooting between 110 and 125 grain um, through eight bullets out of it. So that's been ordered from uh, modern or from IBI, and uh, that should arrive probably at the same time that the rifle actually arrives. They're a little a little behind, I think. So, um, but I, I I know I'll have mine soon. It'll just be a matter of a couple of weeks probably. At the shop, I've been working on a, a Stevens Bolt Action 410, doing a refinishing job on that. Um, not a well-made quality firearm. Let me just say that. And then, and speak of the devil, he's here, but he's standing by waiting for our main topic. Wes sent me two of these. Check that bad boy out. What I have here is a 3D printed Magwell for an FX9. So it's not something that's commercially available yet. You can't buy a Magwell for the FX9. You really need a Magwell for your FX9, especially if you reload like I do. So he sent me two of these bad boys. And... Um, He's got his secured with silicone, but there are some holes in there that I think I'm going to try and lock it to the receiver with some uh, set screws. So I would show you what it looks like on the gun, but the gun is traveling with me this weekend for a match. Um, my godson will be uh, running his first PCC match this weekend. So um, when the show is done, I'm going to go lock that down before I forget. So uh, also... I did some scope ring swapping. So check this out, Adriel. You remember my Stag 10 had the ultra high ATRS rings on it? Mm -hmm. Well, those are going to get replaced with just highs. And those are going to actually go on the modern sporter with this scope. This scope is a Vortex Viper HST. It's a 4 to 16 by 44. That's going to go on the um, onto the uh, modern sporter. What's going on this is a Vortex Viper P PST Gen 2. Um, so once that's uh, paid off and comes home, it'll live on this. And this uh, scope will go on to the Modern Sporter. But note the rings I put on this. These are those baller $200 Vortex rings in, in high. Very so, fancy. Very fancy. And look at how much lower the scope is to the gun now. It, uh, yep. Much more good <clears throat> fit. What you like, right? So yeah yeah exactly um it's but still not ridiculously low like if i showed you my wk with the uh, strike eagle on it the other thing i did was i had bought this from jeff uh, at the calgary shooting center if you don't shop there you're communist it's a loophole mark air but this one actually has a little red dot in the center of the um, duplex reticle and it's way lighter than the vortex i had on there which i don't know where it got oh yeah here you go so look at the size difference here between this loop pulled and this vortex. Like, it's... yep. So taking that vortex off, and I removed the Phase Five full auto bolt carrier group and went with a um, lightweight machine skeletonized bolt carrier group. I think I've managed to squeeze almost a, another pound off of my WK. Super lightweight. I love it. If uh, I might even consider putting a carbon fiber handguard on there just to bring it down even even lighter. So ah, the cost on those things. They're way too oh, yeah, expensive. Five hundred dollars, man. Faxon makes one and it's easily five hundred bucks. Yeah. And how much weight are you really saving? I don't know, but it's cool. And then I um I went to the archery club last night. Um this is kinda sad. The archery club where I got my start in archery, um, the building's being torn down. And the club has to relocate to a gym, which is just awful. This club, the cool part about this club, like I've shot there on Christmas morning. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What did you drop, man? I'm trying to talk to you, and you're just like going around looking for stuff. I got stuff. it. I got it. I'm Thank trying to mount God. that uh, that Ambi mag catch right. on this thing to see if it's There can weird. only be one ADD host who tries to do stuff while podcasting. Oh, look at that. Got my hang up up for no particular reason. <laughs> Get that out of the way. So, um, I'm still yeah, listening anyway. to you. Yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm still here. I, I, I'm just whining. Come on, it's what maritimers do. Uh, we want to spend your money. Um, yeah, so I went to the club last night, uh, probably for the last time. Uh, I had to get uh, Haley Daniels. We've had her on. Yes. Uh, I've never been yeah. on when she's never been on, but anyway, she runs the Ontario Archery Supply with her husband in Ontario and also makes strings and cables. So, she made me a set of strings and cables for my hunting bow, like 
oh, almost two years ago. I finally got off my butt, drove to Bathurst last night to install them and then uh, tune the bow and sight it in because hopefully I'll be going deer hunting soon. So it's nice to get that thing up and running. Um, that's it for me. Uh, why don't we do this? Since our guest is here, why don't we um, get him to join us? He can roll with us as a co-host for the rest of the show. Tell us what he did. What do you think? Yeah. All right. Wesley. He's kind of an unsavory guy, but I guess if you if you insist. It, it, you know, as long as he hasn't had too many loco, what were those things called again? Four locos. Four locos. Four locos. Yeah. As long as he hasn't too many four locos into him, he's all right. So, are yeah, you sober? I am sober. Oh, that's too bad, Tonight. but we'll, we'll roll Sorry. with it anyway. <laughs> all right. You Wesley. Can you hear me okay? Um, well, bit. your audio has been better, but it's been worse, so we'll live with it. All right. um, welcome back to the show. You're here to join us for the main topic. But for now, why don't you tell everyone what uh, what you've been up to this week in guns? Well, what I've been up to this week in guns, uh, not too much. I dry fired a couple of days this week uh, after work. Uh, we had a, a USPSA-style match last Sunday, which I won. Nice. Uh, I shot uh, PCC, or no, I beat the PCCs with a production gun with a Glock 17, so <laughs> that's always nice. <laughs> yeah, you're way better uh, pistol shooter than I gave you credit for. Somewhere along the way, you got really good. Like, you you finished higher in SummerSlam with your Glock 17 than I did with my classic gun, if I remember correctly. I did, uh, and uh, what I consider a bad match, I... Uh, I was shooting my Glock 17 like I would a PCC, you know, two quick makeup shots on a swinger or something. It doesn't work with a pistol like it does with a rifle. So. Nope. <laughs> so I had a lot of mics and stuff in, in nationals, but I stand by my performance. That's kind of where I'm at with that with that platform anyway. So. Well, you know, some people can shoot a Glock and uh, yeah, you're getting it done. I just like how they fit my hands. I know there's there's guns out there with more weight and and all that kind of stuff. I just they're just like an extension of my arm. So I've been shooting them for so long, I'm broken. If I pick up anything <laughs> else, it's weird. Uh. So other than that, you know, some dry fire, some reloading, nothing too special, nothing too crazy. Uh, my next match probably isn't until middle October. So just gonna keep practicing up for that. Nice. And I don't know whether it's going to be allowing PCC or not, so I have to practice for both. <laughs> Man, like it's, I it, it shouldn't be something that we ever have to question. I don't know if PCC will be offered. Just it well, makes. Is start. it popular though? Like, is it popular enough to where it's like, ah, eh, we gotta offer PCC because there's so many shooters. Yeah, it's not they, it's not here yet, that's for sure, but they're offering it anyway. It's not super popular here, too. I mean, we might get four or five shooters a match, but there's definitely some shooters that only come out to shoot that. Like, we have some Right, that's Gallon. That are, Gallon Gallon's yeah. only back in Ipsic because PCC. Yeah, and when we got uh, some strong three-gunners here in Saskatchewan. Uh, I think uh, Jimmy Hunter is one of them. Yep. He only comes out really for shooting PCC uh, at if stick matches. So it's just a way to um, get one or two more competitors. I, I just, who, who wants to turn down match fees? I think we should be taking them as we can. Yep. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's the indoor season. So they're kind of unwieldy around tight indoor stages. So, yeah. It's going to be up to the match director's discretion. So, Yeah, that's the thing. It always is. And that's why I don't bother offering a revolver because I want it to die. <laughs> <laughs> you can, now, you can bring a revolver, but it better be on the production list or welcome to open or something, you know. So, Well, well what about just hosting a match just like the good old days? We'll, we'll only have open and everyone shoots the same division. That way, overall will matter. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh. You are a shit disturber, and I like it. That's I funny. Can be sometimes. Um, my next two matches, I'm doing something a little different. Uh, this weekend, I'm um, observing a student who's completing his uh, instructor requirements to become a black badge instructor, and I'm out of nine mil. 
So I'm going to be rolling some fat 45s down there this weekend. So I'll be shooting classic major this weekend. And I was going to shoot classic major next weekend too, but uh, it looks like I'm going to rock a production optics gun for the last outdoor match of the year just for fun. That'd be cool. So yeah, why not? I've been curious about production optics. You're a little bi curious. Well, like somebody told me, uh, we're too young for production optics. So smarten up. <laughs> like what kind that. of gun? Oh, FN, FNS long slide, of course. Oh, you got one of those uh, rear dovetail sight yep. mounts? Yep. Yeah. So give the, give that a go. Cool. Uh, anything else, uh, Wes? No. All I've right. Been... been quiet? Been quiet. Cool. All right. Uh, except for that thing you're here to talk about, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to jump into upcoming events. There are some level two matches happening around New Brunswick. Um, the first one, well, the first one's this weekend, but it's sold out, so never mind. The next one that you could sign up for is a level two match at the Thomaston Corner Range uh, in New Brunswick. That's near Fredericton. That's October 12th, and you can find that on Practice Score. Then the last outdoor New Brunswick match of the season will take place in the Miramichi, and that'll be on October 13th. Uh, Gallon and I will be there for that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to drive down to Fredericton on Friday. We're actually going to help build the match because, uh, well, let's put it this way. If Larry was a horse, we'd send him to La Page. He's uh, all broken up and needs to be put down. So he was going to cancel his match, but uh, as Mark Manderson put it, not on our watch. We won't let him cancel. We're going to go down and build this match for him and help him run it. So we'll be down there Friday night setting that up. We'll be shooting a level two match on Saturday, then probably getting drunk at Gallant's or at uh, Filthy's, and then the next morning driving to the Miramichi to shoot their last match. Um, and this last thing I can take out of there, because my class is now sold out. So um, Your black badge or... For no, team. my uh, f- yeah, the for latte class I'm putting oh, on is uh, she all filled, she all filled up. So that brings us to the news. Adriel, you got an item there about Bullseye London? Yeah, they. Um, this is kind of a sad news here, but it looks like they've got their uh, range on pause pending election results, which I expect we're going to see some more. Wow, announcements kind of like that because. Uh, why invest in something when the government's just going to take it away? Mm, yeah. I was hoping to see everybody kind of carry on as business as usual, but depending on the level of investment, it might make sense to, uh, yeah. Hang on a bit. Like Put I was, I was talking to some guys about, and they were saying like, Oh, should I get, should I get a non-restricted? Should I get a restricted? Should I get any of this stuff? And, uh, I am not going to get any, uh, accessories because while I think that the if they're going to do a gun buyback and they buy some guns fantastic but I've got an extra barrel I've got an I've got extra red dots I've got extra grips mm-hmm. extra stocks I don't think they're going to pay me anything for that stuff no 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 if if they want AR15s um my AR15s will be um converted to receivers only registered accordingly and that's all they're going to get Yes, and that's the. Uh, I think if if you've got enough, <laughs> if I, the problem is I got I have too much too many accessories, and to do that for myself, I would. Uh, yeah, I'd lose a, I'd lose a pile of money if I did that. So I'm just not buying any accessories until uh, until after the election. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because we don't have a definition yet of this whole. It may be more than ARs, right? It may be assault rifles. It will be more than ARs, right? So like the, the AR in uh, we will ban assault weapons like AR-15s is uh, a PR ploy. They are going to include more firearms. Uh, it's just a matter of which ones. And I don't think there will we'll know until the election is, is over. Yeah. So um, Mike from Canmore, uh, with all his oil money, is going to start buying um, everyone's non-restricted guns here soon. Well, I mean, I go duck hunting a lot with uh, all my non restricted guns, and they fall out of boats all the time. Yeah, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, happens. It's one of the realities. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so Bullseye London, they're they're not going to do their range, and I wouldn't I wouldn't put a million bucks into or wh- however many millions they're putting into range development when uh, when the specter of uh, 
complete eradication is on the, is on the horizon. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, One Stalls has a sale October 1st to 5th. Uh, let's see. Which, what was this? Anyways. Oh, yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff they have on sale right now. Some really good prices. Uh, they've got the X95 for $2,099. That's the 9mm version. Yep. So uh, that's kind of neat. Uh, all reloading supplies, 20% off. They got Mossberg Maverick 88s for uh, 199 also. Holy smokes, really? Mm-hmm. What a great way to get into a, you know, reliable, affordable pump action shotgun. Yeah, yeah. And uh they've got the Simmons 4 to 32 rifle scopes, the uh, rimfire ones for $29 instead of about 50 bucks. Wow. So if you have like a you know, if you want to outfit a cheap 22, that's uh that's one way of doing it. Yep. Yeah. Six hour pistols, 20% off. Wow. Yeah, they got some good stuff in there. Uh, the Savage Arms rifles, the prices are too low to advertise. <laughs> Which probably means that like there's uh, there's some manufacturer pricing that they have to obey, except for in-store. They can probably do something different, so yeah, that's probably what they're doing. They've got Marlin 1894's stainless ones for a couple hundred bucks off. Ooh, lower parts kit. I need a lower parts kit. I need one to finish my... Um, Modern Sporter, 80 bucks. 80 bucks is good for a lower parts kit. Hell yes. Mm-hmm. I think I'll be visiting uh, Wanstalls right now. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't. But I, I, 200 bucks for a, for a Maverick, which is basically a Mossberg 500. $200 for a pump action 12 gauge. Come on. Crazy. Yeah, great price. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, SFRC is selling out some of their demo firearms and demo products. So they've, for example, they've got, uh, well, you know what? I can, uh, I can put it on the screen for everyone else to see. Not you guys. Though. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, demo, uh, Axor arms. So like a typhoon ish kind of a shotgun. They've got four five seventy five. They've got a BCL 102 demo for 1250. That's a good price. BCL 102, but still good price. Uh, they've got a Shadow 2 for 1200 bucks, one of the Urban Grey ones. That's a great deal. And uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So some really decent prices over there as well. Ooh, a Zev OZ9 for 2000 bucks. There's a Sig P320 with a Romeo 1 optic on it. That's decent. 950 mm. Yeah, some good prices. Not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Hmm. I wonder if I shouldn't just get the ultimate repair kit instead, because like I don't need a pistol grip, I don't need a trigger guard, I don't need a trigger. All right. I just need, and I already have some. Yeah, look, they got an air a, a, a pin kit for thirty bucks, all the pins, and then a spring kit for twenty bucks. So that's well. I don't know what to do. I suppose I could always get the uh, lower parts kit and have spares of stuff, right? But I Doesn't don't need it. Hurt. Hurt. Start new build. Start well, a new that's build. What, yeah, that's what happens, <laughs> right? Actually, yeah, I could put the trigger kit in one of my other air lowers. Yeah, you know what? I should buy three. I should buy three of these parts kits. One for each lower, and then one for the modern supporter. Or I should wait till after the election. That's, That's what so I should you win. might want to do. Yeah, you're just letting them win. <laughs> yeah. Might as well vote yeah. liberal, Trevor. Oh, that's, I'm going to cut you. Now, the um, when I go to the website, it comes up as $110. It doesn't show that sale price. Mm. Mm. I have to call, I guess. Yeah. All reloading supply type stuff. Anyway, enough of that. Are we ready to go into our main topic? I think so. All right. So, um, Wes, 
you're coming on tonight to talk to us about desert brutality. So I kind of got a little confused yesterday and started watching watching the um, bloke on the range and uh, in range TV videos on the Finnish brutality. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what, Wes was there. I don't know. I don't think Wes was there. I was like two videos in before I realized Wes wasn't at this match. <laughs> so Wes. Nope. Where were you? Where did Desert Brutality take place? What kind of match was it, and uh, how was it? So uh, Desert Brutality 2019 was the second annual, uh, basically, championships of these two-gun action challenge matches that Ian and Carl from InRange TV host. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I believe it was beginning of January of this year, and it was in St. George, Utah at the Supps Range. And it was the first year, last year was in another range, I don't remember which one, but the first year being at Supps. The Supps Range is the one that uh, Nelson runs, right? Yeah, uh, Ken Nelson and Brian Nelson and the Tactical Performance Center are all yeah. over there. Yeah, so, yeah. So it was kind of cool because that's kind of like Disneyland or my version of Disneyland anyway. That's kind of where all the greats shoot, and they've hosted a lot of national uh, USPSA events there. So it was kind of cool to set foot on that range. Um, but as for the match itself, it was a multi-gun match. It was scored uh, time plus penalties, so not points. And <laughs> that uh, really came to bite my bite my bottom on, on a couple stages anyway. <laughs> Because of penalties? Yeah. Uh, the, the thing I don't really like about the time plus matches is if you really screw up a stage, you're carrying that with you the whole match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and points matches, they kind of they kind of can dissolve a little bit, but oh well. That's the way it was. But it was eight stages. It wasn't a uh, heavy round count. I think it was like a 150-ish rifle and about 60-ish pistol on paper. And, uh, yeah, it was good. Very, it was a pretty physical match. Um, what did we start with? The first stage we started with with was, uh, it was called the Casarda Drill, hard mode. I don't know uh. if, uh, <laughs> if anyone is... Uh, familiar with in-range TV, they probably know what the Casarda drill is, but it was basically um, running for 50 yards, but not, not just running, you throw a kettlebell, a 65-pound kettlebell, if I remember correctly, Whoa. as far as you can, and then you can only run to the kettlebell, then you have to go prone, and you need one hit on the bottom plate of a spinner target with a rifle. And then you stand up again and throw it as far as you can again. So how do you feel about that? Like, do you, do you, uh, you think that's enjoyable? Do you think it's testing any skill or do you think it's hard for the sake of being hard? Well, like what's your opinion on that kind of thing? I, the, the theme I kind of got from this match was it, it was more about the physical with some shooting involved. It was kind of like CrossFit with some shooting involved. Um, I think it's basically a test of a person's physical fitness rather than marksmanship. I guess. Right. So, I mean, it took me, I'm just, I got the practice score uh, stuff up just so I can have something to refer to. But on that specific stage, I was like 53rd out of 168 competitors. So just kind of like upper third i guess but i did it in 137 seconds well that's better than 500 and some adriel wow <laughs> but that was just that one stage the the top yeah. guy did it in 40 oh 46. that's one stage <laughs> that's one stage that's, that's one stage. <laughs> yeah this is the kind of match i won't go to for sure yeah and uh and it was called uh it was called the Crisarda drill hard mode Specifically because at the end of the 50 yards, so once you got the kettlebell over the 50-yard fault line, um, you had to run to a small, basically a, like a foxhole, and you shot the rifle spinner until it spun, which was another 50 yards away, 
but you can shoot it from the prone, which it wasn't so bad, but you're huffing and puffing so freaking bad. A lot of people didn't complete the stage because there was a timeout, um, but at least I got through it. Yeah, but I mean, can you imagine if if getting through it is good enough? Well, I didn't time out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to well, do it though on a on friends. a on a stage like that. You have to put a part time in because you can't have people taking uh, four minutes to huff and puff their way through a stage like like that. Especially a match like that, the expectation is they're gonna put you're gonna see some stuff, right? <laughs> And yeah. you, you can't go there and uh, and not be fit and expect to to do well. Yeah. Yep. I mean. Um. Oh, go ahead. Well, I did. I get the physical right. Um, to try and add something, but as I've said many times, when it becomes more about the physical than the shooting, uh, I'm not interested. That uh, Casada drill. Okay. Sure. But make it twenty five pounds. We've it done doesn't. it with. Uh, I can't remember if our kettlebell was thirty or thirty or thirty five pounds, something like that. But we've done that drill just over a short distance, like uh, ten or fifteen yards, which you can do. I think most people did it with like three throws. But hmm. yeah, I don't even know how many throws it took me, but it, it felt like it, I was in pure agony after the, about the second throw. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what would you say Pure it was again? 60 agony. pounds? It was about six, I, I believe it was 65 pounds. And oh, man, that's yards. just, it was that's just a too much. It was 100-yard bay, and you had to go halfway down the bay, and then once you got down there, it was a 50-yard spinner. So Yeah, that's just too much. That's just like, that is a huge weight to throw around. Oh, it's crazy. Well, I've never, I've never thrown a kettlebell before, let alone a 65-pound one. So Right. <laughs> <laughs> so okay um what, are, what were some of the other highlights uh well uh so the next the next stage it was called math class each stage was kind of different so the next stage was called math class and it started you out you were standing in front of a table with your rifle unloaded slung on your back and i believe your pistol was unloaded as well so on the buzzer on the table, there was some random playing cards, and you flipped it over, and based on the number that you overturned, it was like one, three, or five, multiples of either one, three, or five were what you were supposed to engage. So the targets, the paper targets, had numbers written on the head boxes, and they were divisible by either one, three, or five. So you flipped this card over, you crawled under this trench, under this covered trench with like a, I think they, it was like a 50 pound fake 30 caliber machine gun. <laughs> so you mm -hmm. wiggled your way through this trench. Yeah. And then you loaded your rifle under this platform and you looked at all the paper targets and you go, oh, that one's divisible by three. If you pick three and that one and that one and that one. And then you had to unload your rifle at which point it was just a stick, so you could point it anywhere, so you throw it back over your right uh, back, and you pick up that machine gun thing again, and you run to the next bay with this big heavy metal chunk of whatever, and you throw it in the back of a car, and when you get to the car, you have to climb in the passenger side window. You can't open the door. You have to climb in through the window. You can draw your pistol, load it, and then you engage the next set of paper targets that are divisible by the number that you picked up at the table. So you have to remember these numbers, right? <laughs> it's crazy, because you're, you're just huffing and puffing again. <laughs> and this one was a, a bit of a physical challenge and a, and a lot of a mental challenge, so just like a memory game. So. Sounds challenging. Sounds... Uh... Sounds like they're like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's uh well there is a little element of luck there because if you get the one I guess everything's divisible one by one right uh was it it might have been oh it might have been three three five and seven oh okay. I know that they had specific yeah. targets there was there was like four targets at each station that were divisible by those numbers mm -hmm. right so um cool just a 
it was crazy. Um, I thought that that stage was obviously the hardest to memorize because. By the time you get that big, heavy chunk of metal into that trunk of that car, you're just like, I was super gassed. <laughs> and then you have to remember to load your pistol, make sure you don't do anything unsafe with it as you're getting in the car. Because a lot of people have, not race holsters, they were banned, but a lot of people don't have retention on their holsters because they're mm -hmm. three gunners, right? And yeah. you just got to make sure you don't catch it on the door of the car and all that stuff. Happened to me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, uh, the next stage we shot, it, we shot four stages a day. The next stage we shot was, uh, it was called I'll bomb Tokyo myself. That was probably my favorite stage of the whole match. They have like a fake plywood airplane fuselage and on the buzzer, you get up out of a chair from like the tail position and you load your rifle and through the ports on either side of the fuselage. They just had a bunch of paper hoser targets, like you could reach out and touch them, they're so close. Mm -hmm. and then you go to the front of the fuselage where they had kind of an, a top turret mount, and you climb up the stairs, and you there's a bunch of hoser targets right at the front, and you hose all those. Then you unload and show clear. You run outside of the fuselage, and you pick up what looks to be like a big, big, like it's a six-foot steel air tank or something, or metal air tank. The so bomb. You have to hoist that. Yeah, yeah, it was painted like a bomb. And you have to hoist that on your shoulder, and you have to run to the next bay, drop it in a specific hula hoop, and then you have to climb up on wooden planks and shoot steel targets with your pistol from these wooden planks without touching the ground. So that one was kind of cool. M mainly because I'm more of a hoser than anything else. Yeah. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Um, uh, what, was it, what was it like getting down there with the firearms? How did you travel? Oh, we flew. Okay. So flew flew out of Regina. I had a, so you, when you're flying with firearms, make sure you have a hard case, and it has to be locked with padlocks to the point where you can't pry open the case and stick a finger in if all the latches on the case are undone. The padlock should be able to still hold it this, closed. This sounds like someone's making something up. Who told you this? I just I watched a bunch of uh, basically how to fly with guns on YouTube. So that those cheap plain O cases, apparently, if you undo the the latches, even though they're padlocked, you can pry up a corner and you can reach inside still and touch the gun. So. Mm -hmm. Just to, I don't know if it's a specific rule, but they said just to be safe, you want something like a Pelican case. No, no. Something that you mean a Nanook. you got to fly with a Nanook is what you're trying to say. Correct. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's what I case, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had a case like that. We flew out of Regina to Calgary, and then... You know what? It, it's not so bad as long as you have your paperwork. It is not really bad at all flying with firearms. The only thing that's really a pain is the extra fees they tack on oh yeah oh yeah they charge you extra money just because they can't oh it's a gun no it's golf clubs no it's a gun so it's magically a hundred dollars more yeah and and it, it's supposed to be for some special kind of treatment uh, <laughs> that it gets at the airport but i've never had one that didn't just come out on the regular baggage carousel i guess there's they're supposed to have some security officer like hand them to you or a mine always go through uh oversize coming and going but yeah yeah i've had them i've had them just come out on the carousel and free guns whoever wants to grab them yeah <laughs> well and that's just it there's no there was no one at the carousel uh can i see some id or some paperwork you know like your little declaration that this bag has firearms in it no just make sure you're standing there before someone else takes it. Make sure you put a lot of band stickers on it so they think maybe it's just like, you know, like music guitar. equipment. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I cross into the States uh, uh, quite regularly. I live, uh, like, Regina, we're only an hour, over an hour from the border, so there's all these little border towns that we go shoot matches in. So I've never really been hassled going across the border. Get your form six. 
Yeah, I think cool. driving is easier than flying for sure. What do you uh, What do you do for yeah. Mags? Um, so when we flew in and out of Vegas, and when we landed, we didn't take any magazines or ammunition with us, um, just because rifle ammo is heavy. You can only take like eleven pounds. So what we did is uh, we flew into Vegas. We went to Ventura Munitions, and we we bought enough magazines and ammunition just in the store just to for the match. Mm-hmm. So. Which, wow. with the American magazines, they're so big, you only need, like, one or two of them. And when you're all running the same ammunition, you don't even have to worry about... You just pop them up after your buddy goes. So, And magazines are cheap. That's, that's why we did it, is rather than, you know, screw around with drilling out a rivet or whatever, we just uh, paid the $15 for each P-Mag. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's peanuts. It's peanuts. With guys, guys running CZs are a, a little bit more, um, you know, it was a little bit more expensive for their mags. But I just picked up the Magpul Glock P mags. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they were they were cheap too, and you can get twenty one rounders. You can get twenty seven rounders. The Magpul mags are just stupid uh, cheap, right? And they work. And they work. Right on. Cool. All right, Wes, anything else to uh, share with us about that match? Uh, what about what about Carl and Ian? Did you did you see them and talk to them and stuff? I did. I did uh, see both of them. I shook their hands. Uh, as you can expect, they had a, a gaggle of people around them at all times. There was a bunch of fans all the, all the time around them. So I did see them. I did shake their hand, told them I was from Canada. They were appreciative to to meet us and to see us. Um, nice. I did I did beat both of them, so <laughs> <laughs> even nice. better. I, but oh, were were awesome. they shooting it with like a Madsen yeah. and like a broken old nineteen eleven? Well there's uh, that, yeah. right? So I I have there's a caveat to that, yes. Uh, so I was basically shooting in a division called uh, Scout, which is basically your tack ops division, minus the shotgun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had a one to six on my rifle and a, a you know a Glock 34 and that was kind of done up, but they were shooting them in classic division. So I think Carl was shooting it with a iron sighted AK and a Tokarev, if I remember correctly, <laughs> and and Ian was shooting it with a oh one of those Brownells reproduction. Like, oh, the BRN uh, 180. Uh, Not yeah. the 180s, the 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 Vietnam area like M16. Ah, and and, uh, and I believe a 1911. Like so, they're both in period Vietnam gear, I could say. And here I'm shooting the gamiest stuff that I <laughs> I could bring. <laughs> <laughs> so I not only beat I only beat Carl by like one or two positions. So <laughs> it's close. It yeah. was it was close. I couldn't hook up with the pistol. I don't know. They had one they had one brutal pistol stage. It was all steel, all little steel, like stars and Polish plate racks. And I just, uh, I folded like a cheap suit on that one. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right on. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's move into um, the listener feedback, the YouTube version. Um, we've got Jeremy commenting on... Um, some of the things about the match uh, that he was at, we were in the same squad. Um, he talked about the um, occlusive checks, chest seal, Israeli bat and bandage, clotting agent, and a couple of soft cat tourniquets plus a normal FA stuff. Just uh, a, and you're a leather good belt to go. a tourniquet. Just a yeah. regular leather belt in there, I think is what Jeremy said, right? Yep. Tie a rope yeah. around it and bite down on a stick. Mm. Um, mm, mm, and a mm. uh, a whis a uh, little flask of whiskey for your painkiller. That's right. Israelis. And top it up frequently. Don't like. Don't forget to keep topping it up. Um, Israelis is an Israeli bandage or also used for, for tourniquets. He said he was talking about those plates being light and being forward falling. He didn't have such a good match. He thinks that uh, George has been shooting since '95. Oh, and the match we were not only were we static, we were all shooting from inside a box as well. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do, do. 
Eels says, do you think the nine millimeter holes were blowing out two, two, three? Uh, I don't know what that means. Maybe, uh, were you guys shooting the, the same targets? Sometimes. Yep. Was it two, two, three? Oh, well that's possible. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We had one guy shooting nine mil and he was shooting. Oh yeah. This guy, this dude, Travis, young guy was shooting a Robinson armament XCRL in mm-hmm. 7.62 by 39 using the Robinson Armament, Armament Pistol XCR mags, mm-hmm. the 10-round pistol mags, and it ran like a champ. I never had a single stoppage. I had a stoppage. Marcel had a stoppage. Both times, uh, I think, were ammo-related. Um, yeah, Marcel had a had to mortar the gun. Um, but this, I had an AR in 7.62 by 39, and I couldn't get the mags to work right. The ammo wouldn't feed in the mags at all. Um, but I didn't have the lacquer case stuff. So this was all copper wash case and, and bullet, and it ran great for me. It was really and nice I, to see this, that thing going. This was a, a Robinson Arms XCR, and I think you were talking about, what, what did you have for your 762 by 39 Was it an NEA? Yeah. Um, what else? I think that's why his ran. Maybe. Um I know we had newly manufactured Dominion Arms ammo that wasn't lacquered and it would drag in the mag. If we had lacquer cases, it would run okay. But you're still mostly right. Um, uh, one guy's asking, would it be, would it just, would it be just all restricted rifles? And uh, that's about whether or not they're going to uh, get rid of ARs, restricted rifles, are all semi-automatic box fed. Chances are assault gonna... rifles, so I take that to mean freaking everything because they aren't known for uh, using nuance. the term correctly. Yeah. yeah, they actually said semi-automatic assault rifles. Uh, yeah, which is not a thing. So that's right. It's not a thing. It's not just even. Like... It's not even the not a thing that they made up recently because they just made up assault weapons recently, and that's yep. not a thing. Assault rifles is a thing. <laughs> Semi-automatic assault ban- rifles is not a thing. That's that's yeah, not a thing. That's that's anything. Remember, they're going to ban guns that are already banned. Rod just smacked a reporter upside their head. The reporter asked Rod at one of the press conferences now that they're on the integrity tour. Mm-hmm. So at the press conference, he told the mayors they would have the power to ban guns within their municipalities, but the mayors want handguns banned nationally. What do you think of that? And Rod said, well, they... They already are, and the government can't enforce that ban. So you tell me how banning me from having them is going to fix anything when they're already banned, and they can't enforce it. You need a license to own a gun in this country. Therefore, making guns banned. And the reporter all of a sudden stopped asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, on to, uh, well, there is no on to because there is no emails this week. Or is there, and we didn't put it in. Which is it, Adriel? Well, I don't put them in. Oh, uh, see, Kelly's not here, and none of us picked up the slack for her. That's correct. That's that's, that's exactly what happened. Bad, bad yeah. calls. Well, so you know, um, I just expect things to happen, and uh, I don't pay attention, <laughs> and uh, and then we get to the time when they're supposed to happen, and, and they're not, and it's it's disorienting and weird. <laughs> All right, shut up. <laughs> there's nothing there, so that's why there's nothing in there. But if there was something there. It would have been sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in fire armory finishing. He offers hot bluing, park rising, Cerakote finishes, as well as wood finishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. And we just got a huge swack of Vortex in stock. Some discontinued Vortex models. Ooh. That are at huge discounts. So we got a razor in there, like a first gen razor, you know, new, just been sitting around somewhere and it's a discontinued model, but you know, still under warranty and all that stuff. It's a brand new scope. Um, huge discount. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's super duper heavy. Those first gen razors are just. Oh, no, it's monster. not a big one. What's it's that? like Diamondback size. Oh. It's not, it's not like the big, huge razor. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, it's I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the Razor HD. <laughs> Yeah, those big uh, ones. So. 6 to 24, 6 to 25, whatever that one is. That yep. one is 48 ounces. <laughs> Jeez. That is a huge heavy scope. Oh, man. My uh, Viper P2 
PST Gen 2 doesn't weigh that much. So, no. um, all right. Um, if you want to send an email next week, you can do so by sending it to slamfireradio at gmail.com. And shout outs. I've got one here to the organizers of the Miramichi ORPS match. Uh, I actually reconnected with an old uh, university uh, acquaintance, someone who used to, uh, we both ran in the rugby circles. I think he played. I made the team, but the night before the first match, I took acid and drank a whole lot of beer and then didn't, didn't wake up for the match the next day. So that was the end of my uh, rugby career. Um, but anyway, yeah, I recognized him uh, almost right away. Matt Treffers. Did you, where'd you go to school? You know, Kevin Rigby? Oh, uh, yeah. And then it all, the floodgates of memories opened, right? So, and um, to the dude who gave me this, check this out. He is uh, working oh, that's with. Cool. Yeah, so it's like, what is that? Um, 22s in epoxy? Yeah, epoxy, that clear epoxy. So he's making beer coasters or coasters filled with uh, deactivated 22 ammo and uh, some brass casings and 22 bullets. Very cool. Pulled, pulled apart, put back together, and then sealed in epoxy to make a really cool um, coaster. So I unfortunately don't remember his name. Uh, which is kind of rude of me, but uh, uh, he took his medal from the last match before we got there to take it away from him and uh, sealed in epoxy. So, oh yeah, back to that match. So Alex won overall because that's the thing that we're we're counting in in uh, ORPS as, as well, Wes. We just want to know who won the match. We don't care about open. We don't care about production. Who won overall? So. Matters. Yeah, Alex. It only, it actually, it only matters if production wins. If production and wins in the open, yeah. Not only did production oh. win, he won with a bolt and a, a scope that looks like you've got glaucoma when you look through it. So, mm. yeah, with a monstrous, monstrous 370 score. Um, so he got first in production and... Oh, doo, doo, doo. What uh, was he running? It's a, a Savage Mark II, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a chest. No, it's he's not got a chest. He's got the cheapest bolt action rifle. Yeah. And, and some... a bad scope. <laughs> Dude can shoot, man. Oh, Three, man. 370, Adriel. Yeah, it's crazy. That's... Gallon got second in production. I got first in open, and Joey got second in open. And then the other guys were local guys. So, yeah, we, we done good. But anyway, uh, shout out to those guys for putting on an awesome match. We had a lot of fun. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my ORPS is done for the season because I've got a Ipsic event class match um, course every weekend and a three gun in the month of October. So I don't even get to go hunting in October. And then November, uh, I'll do whatever hunting I can. And then December, we'll be doing indoor stuff. So that's it. No more ORPS for me until the spring. Any, uh, you got some shout outs there, uh, Adriel? Yeah, just to the Chaz people for organizing that, uh, that fantastic ladies event. It was, uh, it's really well done. I, uh, mostly helped out with the rimfire there and, and everything ran really well and everyone knew what they needed to do and people just stepped up and, and did all the stuff. So it was awesome. Nice. Wes, you, uh, you got any shout outs you want to throw out there before we say goodnight? I'll just, uh, do a shout out to all the, Saskatchewan Ipsic people just uh, had fun last weekend and looking forward to the next one. Nice. Cool. All right. And don't hang up when we end the call because I got a couple of questions for you about some stuff. Patreonies. We got a new Patreonie this week. Eric Dell signed up for five bucks a month through our Patreon, uh, which is really important because the. Uh, the did, he, did he send an email? He what did send address? an email. Oh, yes, good. he did. Uh, yep. So you can take care of that. Um, because he's taking care of us. He's keeping the jet fueled, which is really important to help get us to all these baller events, right? We we don't travel coach here in Slamfire, you know, so without your Patreon dollars, we'd have to travel like hobos. So if you would like to make sure that Adriel can sit in first class, you can um, become a Patreon by going to www.patreon.com forward slash Slamfire Radio. And um, yeah, sign up. You get some swag and you get some bonus content once a month. We put out a, a bonus episode of which you are the producer, director, and star. So if you are a Patreon, expect an email or Facebook message from me soon, reaching out to you, getting you, asking you to come on to uh, do a show with us. Better yet, if you're, a, if you're a Patreon, reach out to Trevor and pitch your idea. Yeah, that would be so much better. Seriously. <laughs> 
if you're a Patreon and you want your 15 minutes, send me a Facebook message or an email and let's get you on the air. Um, you can also show your support for us by visiting our website and then clicking on the links for Cabela's. So you go to Cabela's anyway, just go there through our website and we will get a kickback. Join one of our national firearms associations, such as CCFR. Check us out on Gun Owners of Canada and like us on Facebook so that we can put an orphanage in its place. We're at 2,244 and we'd like more than that because we we feel that we are better than homeless children. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.